Well, guys, it's that time of year again. Yes, the garden's coming in. We got produce coming out our ears, but you never stop thinking. Never stop thinking about what's next, what's next. So today we're starting our seeds for our fall garden and I'm just gonna bring y'all along. All right, so it's around, what, the third week in July? Uh, yeah. And so I'm gonna show y'all what we're gonna start here. We're not gonna do the onions. We're gonna start some cabbage, cabbage, some collard greens, broccoli, broccoli and kale. And, and our seed start trays. And that stuff, the sweet chard. Now the, re chard. <laughs> the reason we're gonna um, start our plants instead of planting them straight in the ground is that way they'll have plenty of growing time with still some warmth. Even though they'll last through the frost, even though they'll last through the frost, um, the frost won't hurt them. You still gotta give them some time to grow before the frost gets here because once it starts getting so cold, the growth really, really slows down. So we're gonna go ahead and get these started. Um, and the good thing about starting seeds this time of year is you don't have to worry about grow lights and all that stuff. You just set them outside. Okay. One other thing you want them, when you're starting seeds, um, you wanna make sure you have like a real fine mixture, like your soil needs to be a soil, a seed starting mix. And it's real fine. That way that small seeds can make good, good soil contact and germinate the way they're supposed to be. If you have a real chunky soil, like maybe some compost you made or um, or any, or even like a potting mix, a lot of times it's gonna have little chunks of wood and bark and stuff like that in it. And when it does, your seed won't make good soil contact and will not germinate the way it should because that won't hold the moisture against that seed like it should. And once we get all of these holes filled up here, we we'll want to wet this down before we actually put the seeds in it. That way, because I don't know if any of y'all ever messed with uh, any type of bag soil, but it's like you really need to soak it down and you'll settle down. You know, all of this will settle down. We'll probably have to go back and add just a little bit more. Um, but you, it takes a minute to get that bag soil wet. Um, it's like it like it wants to repel the water for a minute and then once it finally sucks it up then you're good to go and then you'll go back and lightly mist it right over top of your seeds after you've got them planted so like i mentioned you just want to water it in real good make sure that soaks up make sure that your your mixture is really good and damp um, and you can see how that right there is done sunk in. That's sunk in. Those are sunk in. We'll probably add a little bit more soil there. Not much, but just a little. Um, and these trays we're using are just leftover seed trays from plants we've bought in the past. Nothing special. You can use cups. You can use whatever as long as you've got a good drainage hole in the bottom of it so your seed don't drown. All right, so some things that we will be planting straight in the ground are our faster growing crops, which for us here, what we'll be planting is your turnip greens and mustard greens. Those can be sowed directly because they do grow so fast. They don't need to be started ahead of time. Now, our fall carrots, we actually just got those planted last night. So they're in the ground. Um, we actually covered them with a board so the seeds will germinate to hold the moisture there until the seeds germinate. Yeah, once you cover them with a the board, you kind of, you got to check them like probably as early as three days after you plant just to make sure you don't see any germination. As soon as you see germination, you pull that board off and let the sunlight start getting to it. But a carrot seed is, is extremely sensitive to uh, moisture and it needs to stay wet until it germinates. So the board trick is actually something new I've never done before, um, but we're going to try it this year. I actually saw it on Instagram and it made sense so uh we thought we'd try it but now the seed she's talking about sowing straight into the ground won't be sowed until we typically do it around late i mean towards the end of august um and that's also when we'll be putting these in the ground so you kind of got to plan things out um you know we're here towards the end of july we're going to have roughly about a month and a half that be right 
about a month and a half of growing on these before we actually put them in the ground. So that what that does is gives these a good start before you put them out there because if you were to plant that seed straight into the ground, it doesn't have time to do its thing before winter hits. And plus, I mean, we do a lot of succession planting. So right now we don't have enough empty spots in the garden to put all this that we want to plant. Yeah. So it's going to give it time, you know, because if we direct seed them, we'd need to do it right now. Well, right now we've still got a lot of crops coming in. So right. we're going to do it this way. That way we'll have our transplants to put in the ground once our summer crops are done. So we're going to start out with the collards. The collards is probably what we want the most of. It's Megan's, some of Megan's favorite food. So what I'm going to do to make sure I have enough room here to grow the amount of collards we want, I'm going to start off with the collards. And then we'll just make whatever seed, whatever space we got left, we'll do the other stuff. If we don't have a bunch of that, that's fine. Um, but to start off with your seeds, I like to take a stick and put you a little bitty hole right into the middle, not too deep. And go back. Place one in each hole. This is sort of the time consuming part. It's my least favorite part right here. I won't even cover these back up with soil <clears throat> because these seeds are so small. When I go back to water, that'll put enough soil over top of them. And, uh, I'm probably I'm actually planting them just a tad bit deeper than probably what you normally would But where these are gonna be sitting outside. It's supposed to be really hot These seed trays are going to dry out faster than they should and With that being said if that seeds a little bit deeper than what it should be it'll hold moisture down deeper better instead of being right on the top because that's a pretty small seed. And your rule of thumb is you plant a seed twice the depth of the seed. And like I said, I'm kind of breaking that rule today. But it's with good intentions to uh, keep it deep enough that it will stay wet. Cause if that seed dries out once it germinates, it's done. It will not come back out. And you should, if you were real smart people, you'd have a label out here and label what you got going on. <laughs> but you're working with some unorganized people here who don't have nothing to label with. So we'll be labeling this later on. And from until then, we're just going to try to keep stuff organized. So I'll just lay that seed packet at the end of this row. And I'll know them two rows is this. And uh, we'll uh, do it that way. But we'll be getting some stuff this evening. To label these with and that way there'll be no confusion so some folks may not realize this but there are actually two zone sevens we're actually in zone 7a so we have a little earlier frost date than zone 7b so just to let you know kind of give you some perspective about where we are and why we're starting these when we are well we've got all our seeds put in our unlabeled seeds Keep your fingers crossed we can remember what's where before we, by the time we actually label this. To be honest with you, I think I've done forgot what some of it is. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Eventually, we'll we'll know what everything is. But um, anyways, what I wanted to tell you next, we're going to water this in. So don't go in here with like a full blast of water because you'll wash those seeds out or either you'll cover them up with too much dirt or something. You don't want to do that. You want to get your water... Just kind of really light. Like I've barely got that turned on right there. I mean, it's not not much force at all under it. And I'm just gonna 
lightly shower down on top of them. Like I said, I did not cover up my seed. I'm letting the water and do that for me. So if you can, if she'll get in here close, you can see how the water's kind of sealing off over top of those. I mean, it's washing the dirt down into those holes and sealing it off. Now, being that these are seed starts, you never ever want to let this soil dry out. I can't express how important that is to not let it dry out. If it dries out, there's a good chance you're done. You're done, yeah. Especially before they get on up in size. You know, now, if they get up about this tall and they dry out, you know, it's not good for it, but chances are you water it and they'll come back. But when these things are just starting, you've got to keep it wet. And I, like I said, I can't express how important that is. I just hope we can keep it wet enough um, because it's going to be hot the next few days and it's, these are going to be sitting outside and they're going to dry out pretty fast. But anyways, that's it. Um, you know, dead of summer, people are always thinking that your gardens are about done, but garden ain't never done. It's always something going on. If you want to continuously grow something all the time, there's always something to do. Um, so, anyways, just keep your mind rolling and uh, get out there and get your fall, your fall crop seed started. Because it'll be here before you know it.